How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the Refuge Church Q&A series. As always, we are just uh, trying to answer questions that are sent in by text here at Refuge Church in Riverdale, Utah, that uh, come up in people's minds as they hear the sermons and so on that we're going through. And so today's question in regard to a sermon I preached last week on theology proper, which is the doctrine of God. Uh, we talked a lot about God's attributes, a couple of those being that God is both love and He is just. And so I believe in response to that, those two points on the attributes of God, somebody texted in the question, what about those who have never heard the gospel? And what they're asking usually when people ask that question, what about people who have never heard the gospel? They're saying, uh, you know, they know that as Christians we believe what the Bible teaches, and that is that people have to have faith in the biblical Jesus Christ, and through that faith, have a relationship with him to be accepted by God. And basically the gospel is, you guys, that Kellen, that's me, I'm a sinner. Everyone in this world is a sinner. And what that means is we've broken God's law in our hearts and in our minds. And we all know this is true deep down, that we've violated our conscience, we've harmed other people, we've treated God and people in ways that we shouldn't, we've uh, done all sorts of crazy things, we're spiritual criminals, and the reality is that the law we break when we sin is God's law. And so ultimately, all sin is against God. And so because of that, God, being just, he can't just overlook our sin. And so if it's like, you know, any, any good judge in society, you know, that any judge at all that uh, had a criminal come into his court and was like, you know, I know you're guilty. I know you did all this stuff, but I'm just going to overlook it. If, if, if the person standing trial, for instance, had stolen your car, you'd be pretty upset and you'd be demanding justice. And so we know justice is right. And if God isn't just, he's not good. He's not perfect. And because he is, though, God has to uphold justice. But the deal with God, he's not only just, he's loving. And because he's loving, he doesn't want to give us what we deserve as spiritual criminals. He wants to give us his love. And so God has this issue, so to speak, uh, where his question before the coming of Christ was, how am I going to uphold my justice and, let show, and yet show love to sinners? And the solution of that was for God to come the earth, to earth as the man Jesus Christ, live a perfect life, obeying righteousness, obeying the law of God in his heart, in his imagination, and in his actions. And so he did that on our behalf, the Bible tells us. And then he died for our sins on the cross, paying the the penalty for our, for our spiritual crimes. And then he rose again from the dead, conquering Satan, sin, demons, and death and hell on our behalf. And so the result was he fulfilled the demands of God's justice in our lives. And by faith in him, in a relationship with him, he offers us grace and the love of God. And so we believe everyone has to experience that grace and love of God through faith in Jesus Christ to be saved, to be accepted by God as his child and uh, to have a relationship with God in this life and the hope of heaven in the next life. And so as a result, we, when we say people have to come to faith and a relationship in the biblical Jesus to have those things, this is a question that comes up. Well, what about those who have never heard? And people are thinking of, you know, tribes and, and distant jungles and things where uh, maybe Christians have never, ever stepped foot in their village and, and kinds of things like that when they, when they ask this question. And so two quick things I would just say uh, in response or by way of encouragement to the person and, and others who are having this kind of question about this is that first of all, uh, don't assume that just because a human being who is a Christian has never uh, had contact with a certain group of people that they've never heard the gospel. The fact is God has many ways of presenting himself and presenting the message of Jesus to people in this world. And his, while it's normative that he presents the gospel to people through the preaching of humans, through human instruments, God also uses other means. Uh, we know from the book of Revelation that the church, human beings, aren't even the ones who finish the preaching of the gospel on the earth, but it says there's actually angels who will come preaching the everlasting gospel of peace during the tribulation period. It's kind of a final appeal to mankind to be reconciled to God through faith in Christ. Um, I have friends who plant underground churches in close countries like Iran, and they actually quite frequently will meet Iranians that that have come to faith in the biblical Jesus, they have a relationship with him, and they they came to Christ through visions and dreams that God gave them. And so don't assume that just because a human has never had contact with somebody that they have not had a presentation of who Christ is. And secondly, I would say that uh, I believe the Bible teaches that 
whoever would believe in Christ will have an opportunity to believe in Christ. And I think one place we see this is in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 10 and 11 in the New Testament, if you want to go and read that. You have a situation where there's this guy, Cornelius, and he's praying to God and asking God, in essence, it, it appears to reveal himself to him. And because he has that willing heart to submit to whoever God ends up being as he uh, gives revelation of himself to Cornelius, God answers his prayer and he comes to him in a vision and he says he's going to send the apostle Peter to him to give him the gospel message by which he and his house would be saved. And so God, what he does next is goes to Peter and he com he tells Peter in a vision, hey, I'm ascending you to this guy. You're going to find this guy Cornelius. He's a Roman centurion and I want you to tell him about Jesus and then they're going to get saved. And so it was a crazy thing for both of them. I don't have time to get into all the details on the video here, but ultimately through those confirming visions, Peter and Cornelius meet up, Peter gives him the gospel and the guy gets saved. And so P uh, Cornelius was willing to believe. And so God went to whatever lengths he had to, to make sure he had an opportunity to believe through hearing the gospel, whether that be through a vision or through the sending a, a believer in Christ to them in a miraculous way to make sure they got the gospel. God made it happen. I've seen this happen in my own life. Uh, where when I was living up in a town called Sam in Idaho, we used to go in and do outreaches in a local care center for elderly people. And, and uh, to kind of make a long story short here, there was at, at one point a, an older LDS woman who was uh, in, in the care center where we were going and singing hymns and songs and stuff and sharing the gospel. And, and she was never really open to us being there, understandably so, because we present a different gospel than the LDS church does. But at one point, you know, we had, I hadn't seen her in a while and we were in there singing and she got wheeled out, came out in her wheelchair, you know, and when she saw me, she just frantically started waving me over to her. And I, I went over to her and I didn't even believe it in stuff like this at the time. So it was kind of a crazy deal. But I went down and I got on my knees next to her and I said, what's going on? And she, and she told me, you know, straight faced, I about fell over. She said, you know, I, I had a vision of Jesus and you were with him. And he told me I'd been lied to my entire life and that you had a message for me. Now, at that point, after I kind of picked myself up the floor, off the floor, I, I was like, okay, well, yeah, I do have a message for you. And I shared with her the biblical gospel of God loves you. Jesus died for your sins. He rose for your life. It's not about what you've done. It's about what he's done. And she said, well, I just don't know if I've done enough. And I said, no, no, it's not about what you've done. It's about what he's done for you in his perfect life and on the cross and in his resurrection. And she said she wanted the, a relationship with God through that gracious, free forgiveness that Christ has to offer. And so I prayed with her at that time. So Big, big idea points here. What about those who have never heard? First of all, don't assume they've never heard because God has many means of getting the gospel out, although it's normative for that to happen through people. And secondly, I do believe the Bible teaches whoever would believe is going to have an opportunity to believe, and God will go to great lengths to make sure they hear about Jesus Christ, the one name given under heaven by which we must be saved. So I hope that answer helps, and we'll talk to you next time.